Hello, this is Charles Folkhart on October 23rd, 2017, and number three in the series of On the Road with Charles Folkhart. This is a takeoff of On the Road with Charles Corral back in the 60s. It went for 20 years. Look it up if you want. I'm here in Pocatello, Idaho. I've been here since last uh saturday i believe it was and i'm looking at myself on the screen here i look a little unkept it's been one hell of a week folks and uh, we're going to get into that here in a minute and uh, it's what i call a memory maker i will never forget this week i ne never never this will go with me until i die but that's what life's all about folks it's uh uh, you have to take a risk in order to get the reward and uh, I'll tell you what <laughs> it's been one heck of a ride anyway I suggest you watch the other two videos in the series here to catch up get up to speed and on the same page if you're interested find out what I'm talking about well I'm uh, we're gonna talk about oh before we go there I want to show you where we left off on the last video hold on so this is what i woke up to on friday morning a week ago friday and as you can tell it was pretty nippy outside but uh, hey i got there in one piece i got my new tires on and uh, i was uh, in idaho at on my way to Arizona so as I mentioned in my last video I was in um, just below Rocker Montana and I made it down to Idaho Falls right here and that's the picture you saw with the snow so I got up um, let me think about what morning it was I got up and left Idaho Falls can't really remember, but I think it was either last Friday or Saturday morning. I got up and I left Idaho Falls. Doesn't really matter. But um, I, I, I failed to mention that as I was headed down the road, um, the exhaust leak, which I thought may have been uh, rocker arms that needed adjustment, I wasn't sure when I was up in Kalispell. I knew I had a issue at the front right side of the engine. Either uh, rocker arms needed adjustment or I had a leak in the exhaust. But I figured if it was the exhaust leak, it, it, it wasn't going to be too much of a problem if it didn't get too big, too, too, it didn't get worse. And uh, I, I had to leave because it was getting late, mid-October. And so I left figuring whatever the issue is, I will fix it on the road. So as I was on the road and uh, I would put my foot on the gas and take it off, I began to realize it wasn't... Uh, the rockers it was an exhaust leak so when I got to Idaho I'm sorry when I was when I got to Pocatello I pulled over and I um, decided I was going to fix this uh, exhaust leak because it was loud it was got worse on the highway all those miles it got worse and with all the stress and everything I you know and that that noise if you if you've ever heard an exhaust leak you'll know what what i mean so i pull over and i call a um, uh, shade tree mechanic um, buddy of mine up in uh well, not a buddy but uh, the guy that i usually use to fix things on my uh toyota that i couldn't repair myself and he never answers the phone he, and it was going to be a long shot, but he did answer the phone this time. He was going through a divorce, so I guess he was on the phone a lot because he was moving. So he had his own issues, but I explained the problem. He says, that's probably just an exhaust leak at the, at the front, and you can fix that fairly easy. It removed the two bolts, maybe the two bolts in the middle holding the 
exhaust manifold on pry it apart with a screwdriver you get the new gasket you slip it in you tighten the bolts back up and you're on the road good to go <laughs> so i'm in the parking lot at fred myers in pocatella idaho and there's a auto zone there so i walk over there and i get a a, a set of gaskets and i'm going to remove those two bolts and i'm going to do what he says and i that's what I do. I do that. And as I'm pulling out the front bolt, I notice it's stripped. It's crossed threaded. So already we have an issue. So I go back over to AutoZone. I buy it. No, I went to the hardware store up the road on my bike. I bought a tap. I did a new tap. You have to use two and a quarter inch bolts. Can't be any longer than that. They didn't have two and a quarter inch bolts at the hardware store. So I added a nut, a quarter inch nut to the bolt. I put the new bolt in. I put everything together. I thought it held. I'm good. But I noticed when I pulled the thread out, the, the front bolt out, that it was leaking antifreeze so that front bolt goes through into the water jacket and uh man when that when i saw that leak now i put the new bolt in and started the engine up thinking i'm good i can get back on the road and head out it's leaking it's leaking antifreeze and i you know, after what happened in uh, Idaho Falls with the tires, I'm just, I'm, I'm at my wits end. I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm standing there in the parking lot, and I must have looked like um, it, I was in trouble because some guy comes up, and he says, it looks like you need some help because my hood was up, and I'm out there with my truck. I'm working on the vehicle with my tools and he says i'm a certified mechanic can i can i help you so we talk a little bit and he says oh no that's common that front bolt and the rear bolt both go into the water jacket um he told me what i had to do and uh, uh i went and did that he says you get a stud and these studs expand they heat when they heat up and it blocks that antifreeze from coming through so i go back to the auto parts that particular auto zone didn't have it i had to find another um if i remember right i had to find another oh i went across the street to advanced auto parts and they happened to have that stud so i went back to the vehicle take that bolt out clean it up again with the tap and put the new stud in tighten it up add more antifreeze another ten dollars because you can't can't afford to have your car without enough antifreeze in when you're down here in idaho it was cold and so i got the engine going again and guess what still leaking and i'm thinking to myself you can't make this stuff up so now what do i do so i call my buddy up in um, one of the few buddies i have up there in kalispell and uh, and uh, he him and i come up with this idea that i'm going to use jb weld you know what am i going to do the other option is helio coil but i can't get to the the head i can't get a drill in there because of the confinement so you have to take the head off and put the helio coil in and um, I didn't want to take the head off unless uh, I didn't have any other options <laughs> so I tried the JB well this was a week this was on Tuesday of last week is either Monday I put the JB well down or Tuesday and uh, this is after I went around trying to find uh, mechanics that would uh, do the work for me or, or let me park in their 
parking lot. Because remember, I'm in the parking lot of Fred Myers here. here. And I don't want to be doing this work in the parking lot. So I went around and I tried to find somebody that would let me park in their parking lot and then do this work in, the, in their parking lot because I have to sleep there overnight. But nobody would let me park in their parking lot. So much for people helping you uh, when you're in need. So if you think you're going to get on the road and you're going to find somebody that's going to help you, think again. So anyway, so I'm doing this work in the parking lot. I buy the JB Weld, and the guy at Advanced Auto Parts, he was an exhaust guy, worked for many years exhaust, and he suggested that I do that too. So that's what I did. I took the old, original JB Weld. I mixed it all up like you're supposed to. My acquaintance up in uh, Cowspell said, put it in a straw put the JB weld in a straw and then so I, I found a quarter inch rod big enough that go into the straw push the JB weld don't go too far because it'll go too far into the manifold and go into the, the water jacket and you'll lose it so I pushed the JB weld into the half inch that you have there where the thread connects and holds the manifold on then I put that uh, same kind of uh, stud in there and let it sit. I had to let it sit 24 hours to let it cure. So that's Tuesday morning. I get up, put the, the bolt on just enough to hold the exhaust manifold on because now I don't care if I have an exhaust manifold. That's the least of my problems. And I start the engine up again and guess what? It's still leaking antifreeze out of the front bolt hole. So now I'm stuck. I already know that the mechanics don't want to help me because it's they don't want to work inside of a confined space like that. There's really no mechanics that work on these kind of vehicles because they don't have the height where they can pick up the, um, the RV. So I'm stuck. And my buddy Ryan up in uh, in uh, Canada, and thank God for Ryan. He's been there for me the whole time. Thank you, Ryan, buddy. He suggested I get on Craigslist and find a, a mechanic on Craigslist. So there's a McDonald's right across the street. I haven't been in a McDonald's since Korea when we used to buy the little ice creams and sit outside and eat ice cream. I don't eat McDonald's. But I went over there, used their internet. I found, and they let me use it for free. I didn't have to buy anything. I sat there, they only had one outlet. I sat there where the one outlet was. I plugged in my laptop. I found a mechanic and uh, he said, yeah, I can be there this afternoon. I'll be glad to help you. And that was Tuesday. I remember distinctly that was Tuesday afternoon. Well, he calls me late Tuesday and he says, I got good news and bad news. I can't be there this afternoon, 6 o'clock, but I can be there tomorrow morning early. And I said, okay. He says, what time you get up? I said, I get up at 6. He says, yeah, I'm an early riser too. <laughs> so I sit in the parking lot again on Tuesday night, and I get up early on Wednesday expecting this new mechanic to show up early Tuesday and by 10 o'clock, he's not there. I send him a text. I go, uh, ETA, what time are you showing up? Oh, I'll be there shortly. Anyway, long story short is he finally got there uh, after 12 o'clock, I think it was. And so we look at what I'm doing. We fill up my RV, my Chevy 350, with water. And uh, we're headed towards his house. I'm con and then when we put the water in, I check the leak, and it's not leaking anymore. So it's not leaking. But I know JB Weld is probably not going to help. There's no way that I'm going to drive down through Utah and Nevada and Arizona with 
with a known problem that could blow out at any time and overheat my engine and now I got a huge problem new engine needed so we get to his house on Wednesday afternoon let me let me uh, try to remember the date well that would have been a week from the 11th so that would have been the 18th of October we get to his house we park on Wednesday October 18th and I'm gonna hold it there and the next video will be on what we did or what transpired in order to fix this issue I want to thank you for watching thank you for subscribing thank you for supporting this channel and may the grace of God our Father Yahweh who created the level plain earth covered with a firmament waters above waters below that's why there's blue sky that's why the rainbow is a bow because it conforms I believe to the firmament there is no space it's all pictures that you've been shown and told what it is it's all fake folks may his grace be upon us all and I covet your prayers and may the grace of God our Father be upon us all and especially upon me because it seems like I need it see ya